This is EE300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2, Module 4, Video 1, The Sound and Key Circuit. In this video, we'll look at how we got here. We'll look at typical second order filter frequency responses. We'll look at what's called the Saddle and Key Circuit. We'll summarize what we did today and look at what's coming next. So to review, we've gotten here by having a module on Laplace transforms, how to use a Laplace transform to solve differential equations and circuits. We had a module on network functions, how to talk about the uh, both the behavior at a terminal pair, impedances and admittances, and the behavior between terminal pairs, transfer functions, uh, of the inputs and outputs as functions of S, uh, the Laplace variable. And uh, we saw how to do step responses, and we saw how to do sinusoidal steady states, and that led us to the idea of the frequency response. Uh, and we did frequency responses of low order, first order, and uh, second order systems, and we also did the Bode plots, where we looked at these and could uh, sketch very quickly the uh, 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 frequency response, uh, magnitude, and angle uh, as a function of frequency. This module, we're going to look at filter design, and the components of this module are going to be the sound and key circuit, what we're doing today. And then next video, we'll look at how to do Butterworth and Chebyshev low-pass filter design. Uh, so these will be uh, higher order, but not high order. So we're going to be still doing low order circuits, but now we're going to be doing fourth and fifth and maybe sixth or seventh order filters, and we'll be able to design them to have particular specifications, cutoff frequencies, attenuation and stop bands, and the like. Uh, we'll do the same thing for high-pass and band-pass filters after that, and that'll be after the break. Uh, the final module will be a short module on transformers, and so how we can apply those and what we're doing here. So let's look at some typical the, the typical second or low-pass uh, uh, second-order filters, transfer function, and uh, its frequency response. So this is like the output of a, a RLC circuit, series RLC circuit with the output across a capacitor. Uh, that's the omega naught squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega naught s plus omega naught squared term. And then let's say we've got an, a non-inverting amplifier on the output so we can give it some gain k. So this is what that output would look like, uh, the frequency response. The horizontal axis here is on a logarithmic uh, scale. So this is frequency. It's normalized frequency. So everything's around the undamped natural frequency, normalized by the undamped natural frequency. And it's a logarithmic. So over here it's a, a one decade below the undamped natural frequency. And here it is a decade above. The vertical axis here um, is magnitude of the frequency response, and it's not really a, a 20, it's not shown as a Bode plot, so this is not 20 log base 10, the magnitude. This is just the magnitude on a logarithmic scale. So uh, here we see that the low frequencies, the gain is K, as it ought to be, because for low frequencies, uh, uh, anything with an S in it gets dominated by the omega naught squared, the omega naught squared in the numerator and the one in the denominator cancel each other out, or, or the ratio is one, and so we're left with the scale factor K. Uh, for very high frequencies, uh, uh, J omega squared here uh, is going to dominate everything else. And so this thing is going to roll off like 1 over omega naught over, over omega squared. It's going to roll off like uh, 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 omega naught over omega quantity squared. Uh, and that's going to, uh, because of the J squared here, you're going to get a minus J in the numerator giving you 180 degrees at uh, very high frequencies. And then around uh, omega equals omega naught, we're going to get this uh, behavior uh, when omega naught, when zeta is equal to one, that's when you're critically damped. You've got uh, two real poles at, at minus omega naught on the real axis. And as omega naught gets smaller, the poles move on that radius of uh, a circle of radius omega naught, and they get closer to the J axis until you get to fairly small values of zeta. You can approximate the location of the poles as minus zeta omega naught plus minus j omega naught. And it's in that regime when they're uh, close to the j axis, you get this peaky behavior, and you can see that the gain at omega equals omega naught. Uh, when we plug in j omega naught here, you're gonna get the omega naught square minus omega naught square. Uh, in this term here, you're gonna get omega naught squared over omega naught squared, and you're gonna get one over j two zeta for the ratio here. So everything's gonna be k over j two zeta. So you're gonna get a scale, you're gonna get k, whatever the gain was in the low frequencies, scaled by one over two zeta. And that's gonna make it bigger since uh, zeta is smaller than one, between zero and one in this peaky behavior uh, regime here. We can factor out the omega naughts from the numerator and denominator uh, and have them cancel. Uh, uh, and so uh, they show up in the denominator of S, uh, S over omega naught quantity squared plus 2 zeta, S over omega naught plus 1. That'll make it easier to do some of the design we're going to do. And then the scale factor K is just in the numerator. So we can see again at low frequencies we're going to get K, high frequencies we're going to get K over omega naught uh, squared. Uh, uh, 
and then it, at the resonance, uh, the uh, S square term and the one term are cancel each other out, and we still get two K over two uh, uh, zeta uh, for the value magnitude. So summarize: low frequency gain is K, angle zero degrees. Uh, at omega equals omega naught, you get K over two zeta, and you get an angle of minus ninety degrees, and then it rolls off over here in the high frequency regime at 40 dB per decade, and uh, um, the angle goes to 180 degrees. Now notice one thing here. You can pick K and you can pick zeta, but once you pick zeta, you get K over two zeta. So you can pick K and you can pick uh, the gain here at the uh, omega equals omega zero, but that's gonna tell you what uh, uh, zeta is. So between the low frequency gain, the gain at omega equals omega zero, and zeta, you only get to pick two of those. You can pick the, the, uh, the gain at omega equals omega zero and zeta, and that's going to give you the low frequency gain. So you only get to pick two of those three. So the sound and key circuit. Here's the topology of the sound and key circuit. You've got a non-inverting amplifier over here with a gain mu. And we're going to feed the input here through this. Uh, uh, it's not quite a voltage divider because this current would be coming in, fed back from the output through Z3 to uh, the node between Z1 and Z2. But that, whatever comes out of Z, the current coming out of Z2 will come down here through Z4 to set up the voltage at the plus terminal, and then that gets amplified uh, by uh, the gain mu. So we can, you're going to solve this circuit on the homework. It's a step-by-step -step solution. It's, it looks hairy, but don't uh, panic. It'll be fine. You can do this. So we do this because this is the building block for our higher, this uh, higher order filter design we're talking about. And we can make this be either low pass or high pass, depending on how we chick, uh, choose the impedances there. You've actually done this previously on a homework where you had R for Z1 and R for Z2 and C for, uh, uh, 1 over SC uh, for Z3 and 1 over SC for Z4. So, and that's sort of where we'll start with this. So here's the transfer function that you're actually going to find uh, between V2 and V1. You get the gain mu, and then you've got this product of Z1, Z2, Y3, and Y4. That's 1 over Z3, 1 over Z4. And then you've got these terms Z2, Y3, Z1, Y4, and then 1 minus mu, Z1, Y3, and then a plus 1. Now see, that's the same form we had before. So if we pick a resistor for Z1, a resistor for Z2, a capacitor for Y3, a capacitor for Y4, and plug those in. First, here's what the topology now looks like. So there's a pair of resistors, R1 and R2. There's feedback to the, the point between R1 and R2 through capacitor C1, and there's the path to the, uh, to the ground uh, from the plus terminal through C2. And when you plug those in, you get this transfer function, S square R1, R2, C1, C2, plus S quantity R1, C2, R plus R2, C2, plus one minus mu R1, C1, and then the plus one. So here's that same circuit, that same transfer function. And so how can we make that be the low pass uh, uh, transfer function we had earlier, K over S over omega naught squared plus two zeta S over omega naught plus one. There's two different ways we're gonna study here. There's other ways to do this also, but you choose the R's and C's and mu to make uh, specifications of K omega naught and zeta so here, the first one we're going to do is called the equal elements method, where you make the two resistors the same, you make the two capacitors the same, and that's what you did on a previous homework. The second method we'll pick, we make the two resistors the same, but we make the gain over here, we just turn this into a buffer, we turn, uh, just a, a follow voltage follower by making the, the feedback, uh, the minus connection to the output, just a short a ground, and then making the, uh, the resistance to uh, ground here infinite. Well, that's called the unity gain method. So we'll look at both of these here. So for the equal elements method, um, we pick equal values of R. So R1 and R2 are both R, C1 and C2 are both C. And we plug those in, here's what you get. You can see you're gonna get R1, you're gonna get R squared C squared times S. And then you're gonna get one, two, three um, RCs, and then minus a mu RC. So you get S times RC times three minus mu, and then you've got your plus one. And so how, how do you make those equal K over S over omega naught quantity squared plus two zeta S over omega naught plus one? Well, it's not hard to see them. I mean, you can see that one over RC has to equal omega zero in both the uh, uh, quadratic term and in the linear term. So RC is one over omega naught. That'll make uh, that work. And that leaves three minus mu, this factor here, to equal uh, two zeta. 
Um, now, the, the, you can't force the gain to be k. So if k is just, I mean, if k turns out to be mu, great, we win. But k is probably not going to equal to mu, and so you may either need an amplif amplifier uh, circuit uh, or uh, um, you may actually need an attenuation. You may need a voltage divider to get that. Okay, so let's see how this works. You design a second, let's, here's a, a circuit. Uh, we want a, a second or low pass filter. We want to have a, a resonant uh, frequency or a mega naught of 1,000 radians per second, a bandwidth of 200 radians per second, and a DC gain of 10. So omega zero is 1,000, which means RC is 1 over omega naught, uh, and that's equal to uh, 10 to the minus 3. So we know how to get 10 to the minus 3 by the product of R and C. We could pick R as 1k ohm and C as 1 microfarad. We've done that before. Now we need for 2 zeta omega naught, uh, which is going to be 200, right? That's the, the, the bandwidth of a, a, a resonant a narrowband circuit is 2 zeta omega naught. So that's given, and we're given in the problem statement to make that 200. That makes 2 zeta 0.2. And so 3 minus mu has to equal 2 zeta, and mu has to equal 3 minus 2 zeta, or 2.8. Finally, that gives us a, a mu from the circuit, the DC gain in the numerator of 2.8, but we need a DC gain of 10, so we need an additional gain stage with a, a gain of 3.57, which is 10, 10 divided by 2.8. So again, R is going to be equal 1K ohm, C is going to equal 1 microfarad. We need this gain of 2.8, so we're going to have a 1 and a 1.8 uh, scales, and then we're going to need a 3.57, so we're going to have a 1 and a 2.57. So here's a circuit that does that. I mean, this is it's just a matter of putting these uh, component values in to the circuit we already had. So there's the two resistors with values of 1K ohm. Here's the two capacitors with value of 1 microfarad. And here's the gain of 2.8 on the sound and key circuit that we need. And then here's the additional gain of 3.57 we need to achieve our overall DC gain of 10. Okay, that's pretty cool. And that's just, that's how you do the equal elements approach. Now some notes. Uh, we know the gain's got to be great, the mu has to be greater than 1. It's a non-inverting amplifier. A non-inverting amplifier always has a gain greater than 1. So 3 minus mu uh, is, you know, has to be <laughs> somewhere bigger than 2. Uh, and so that limits the range of zetas that can be implemented. Implement, impl implemented. Uh, it should be implemented. So mu's, when mu is equal to 1, you've got uh, as little gain as possible. Uh, you get a zeta equal to 1, and when mu is equal to 3, you get a zeta equal 0. So uh, zeta gets smaller for increasing mu there. And so this thing's only good for underdamped systems. Or you, you could get to critically damped if you wanted to. But uh, 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 and you can also get to oscillation, you see here, if you had a, a zeta equal, a mu equal 3, you'd get a zeta equal 0, and, and now your poles are right on the j-axis, and the thing ought to oscillate. That's not good. So you want to you want to keep it between one and three, and you want to keep the uh, poles uh, uh, on the j-axis on, on the circle there of a circle of radius and make it up. All right. Here's the unity gain method. Again, here's the, the transfer function for the uh, sound and key circuit uh, low pass with the R1, R2, C1, C2, and now for unity gain we pick a mu equal one. We're going to let this. Uh, uh, Resistance go infinite, this resistance goes zero, and so we just get uh, the op amp circuit becomes a voltage follower over here. <clears throat> so if mu is equal to one, okay, if mu is equal to one, then the R, this term here, the R1C1 and the mu R1C1 cancel each other out, and we just get two R2, uh, two RC2S here uh, for the middle term, and we get R squared C1, C2 as a coefficient of S squared. So how do we make this equal up? Well, you don't get there in one step on this one. Uh, R squared C1, C2 has to equal 1 over omega naught. So omega naught has to be 1 over root, 1 over R root C1, C2. That's all in the denominator there. And then the 2 R C2 has to equal 2 zeta over omega naught. And plugging in the omega naught from the previous step, that leads us to zeta equals root C2 over C1. So the, to do the design, you pick C1. And if, if you pick a C1, then C2 has to be zeta squared C1. <clears throat> and since if, you know, if it's underdamped and zeta is between 0 and 1, C2 is going to be smaller. If it's overdamped and zeta is greater than 1, C2 is going to be bigger. And then you can plug this zeta. Uh, you can solve this. Uh, you go back here and you plug omega naught, uh, the expression here in. And uh, the value of C you get doing this, you plug it back into the omega naught expression. And R will equal 1 over zeta omega naught C1. 
So then, since the DC gain of this is going to be 1 up here, you're just going to have to have a stage uh, with a gain K here for whatever you want your low frequency gain to be. So here's the same design here. Uh, omega naught, 1,000 radians a second. Bandwidth at uh, 2,000, so zeta's point, z 2 zetas, uh, uh, 0.2, zeta's 0.1, DC gain of 10. Okay, so zeta's 0.1, pick C1, 1 microfarad. So C2 has to be zeta square C1, so it's going to be 0.01 microfarads. And then R is going to be 1 over zeta omega naught C1, so that's going to be 1, and zeta omega naught, uh, this is a bug here. Zeta omega naught ought to be 100. So this ought to be 1 over 100 times 10 to the minus 6. I'm sorry about this, folks. <clears throat> uh, so that's going to make this smaller. That's going to make this bigger. This ought to be 10k ohms. And so that's going to make my circuit bad here in the future. I'm sorry. I thought uh, this is 200 is the value of 2 zeta omega naught, not zeta omega naught. So this ought to be 10k ohms. Uh, and then the DC gain is 1 from the sound and key circuit, so we need to get a desired gain of 10, so we need an additional uh, sta gain stage with a gain of 10. Okay, so this is buggy here. This ought to be 10k ohms. This ought to be 10k ohms. But the 1 microfarad feedback here and the 0.01 microfarad uh, path to ground here are right, and here's the gain of 10 that we need to add after the fact. So that's the sound and key uh, circuit. That's how you use it. Uh, we saw we had a, a low-pass uh, circuit uh, with a resonance had a particular transfer function. We could implement this using the sound and key circuit. For equal elements, you pick uh, uh, R1 and R2 equal to R, and C1 and C2 equal to C. So RC is 1 over omega naught, the undamped natural frequency, and 3 minus mu is equal to 2 zeta. Uh, so you can pick uh, the resonant frequency and the zeta uh, independently of each other here, uh, but you then you have to go back and fix up the gain. Uh, it's only good for underdamp systems, we saw that. Unity gain, you put mu equal one, so you're always gonna fix the gain. Uh, and then R1 equals R2 equals R, but C2 is zeta squared C1, and R is one over zeta omega naught C part. Sorry about that bug too. And you can only implement that, uh, you can implement overdamped as well as underdamp systems here. So you can make zeta bigger than one, you can make zeta smaller than between zero and one. Uh, it doesn't matter. <coughs> So what we'll do in the next video are Butterworth and Chebyshev low-pass filters, and then after that we'll do high-pass and band-pass filter design. So this has been Module 4, Video 1, the Sound and Key Circuit, EE300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2.